video, we're going to do some calculus with parametric curves. Let's think about tangent lines first. So if I have a parametric curve and a specified point with coordinates x0, y0, we could approximate the slope of the tangent line using delta y over delta x. Now delta y over delta x in this case means well, first of all, x naught means x of t naught. Y naught is a y evaluated at, at t naught. So there's a single value of t, which gives me x naught and y naught. So I move a little bit away from uh, t naught to delta t, and then I subtract off y of t naught, and then x of t naught plus delta t minus x of t naught. So the next thing I could do, oh, of course I need to be careful that the denominator is not zero there. So the next thing I want to do is multiply the numerator and the denominator by one over delta t. That will give me a difference quotient, which in the limit of delta t goes to zero, will give me y prime over x prime, both evaluated at t naught. Again, I need to be careful that both derivatives exist and that uh, x prime of t naught is not zero in some open interval containing t naught. In Leibniz notation, I could just write this as dy dx is dy dt over dx dt. So let's work through an example. We've got the curve with parametric equations x equals t squared, y equals t cubed minus 3t. And we'd like to show it has two tangent lines at the point 3 comma 0, and we'd like to find their equations. Well, let's start out and make sure that we know uh, what value of t we're looking at, or what values are t. Because when x equals 3, then t squared will equal 3. So t could be radical 3 or negative radical 3. Now let's make sure that with both of these values of t, my y coordinate will be 0. So when t equals radical 3, y evaluated at radical 3, is going to be, well, radical 3 cubed minus 3 radical 3. But radical 3 cubed is another way of writing 3 radical 3. So when I subtract 3 radical 3, I get 0. What changes if I use t equals negative radical 3? Well, the sign on both terms will change. Both of these signs have odd exponents. So now I'm going to have negative radical, negative 3 radical 3 plus 3 radical 3, which will also give me 0. So for two different values of t, I'm going to be on the same point on the curve. Now calculating the derivative is pretty simple. It's just y prime over x prime. And so let me evaluate that expression first when t equals radical 3. So that would give me, what, 3 times 3 is 9, minus 3 is 6. 6 divided by 2 is 3, so I'll get 3 over radical 3, which is the same as radical 3. So an e the equation, or an equation, of one of the tangent lines is y equals radical 3 parentheses x minus 3. Now what will change if t equals negative radical 3? Well, the in dx, I'm sorry, dy dx, the denominator will change sign. And so now I'll get a negative radical 3. So an equation for the other tangent line would be y equals negative radical 3 parentheses x minus 3.
what about areas? Well, our area formula would be just the integral from a to b of f of x dx. So that's just y dx. So I just keep y in its parametric form. And in place of dx, I would have x prime of t dt. And then, of course, my bounds have to be in terms of t rather than in terms of x. So let's work out an example. We'd like to calculate the area under one arch of the cycloid. And it's just going to be a cycloid uh, generated by a, a circle of radius a. So the parametric equations are x equals a times the quantity t minus sine of t, and y equals a times the quantity 1 minus cosine of t. And one arch means we'll just go from 0 to 2 pi. Well, my dx, if I just take the derivative, or x prime of t, I will find that it's 1 minus cosine of t dt. And so my integral for the area is going to be 0 to the integral from 0 to 2 pi y, which is a parentheses 1 minus cosine of t, times x prime of t dt. So I've got two a's multiplied together. I'll bring that out in front as a squared. Inside, I'll have 1 minus cosine t quantity squared. So go ahead and use FOIL to multiply that out to get 1 minus 2 cosine of t plus cosine squared of t. Now I can use an identity for cosine squared of t. That's 1 half 1 plus cosine of 2t. Go ahead and remove the parentheses, collect like terms, and finally find the antiderivative and evaluate it between 0 and 2 pi. Now the sine terms make no contribution because sine of 0 is 0 and sine of any multiple of pi is 0 as well. So I only need to be looking at the 3, t, 3 over 2 t term and that turns out then to be 3a squared pi. Let's revisit arc length. Suppose now I have a parametric curve and I'm going to try to find the length of the curve between two values of t, from t equals alpha to t equals beta. And what we're going to do now is we're going to partition the t intervals into n subintervals. But we'll have x of i equals x evaluated at t of i and y sub i being y evaluated at t sub i. And our points will now have coordinates x sub i, y sub i. Uh, one difference is that now uh, both delta x and delta y will depend on i. Uh, there's no guarantee if just because delta t is the same for each subinterval that delta x or delta y will be the same. But as before, we'll get an estimate of the arc length by calculating the lengths of the line segments, segments connecting these points. And we add up the lengths of all those line segments. And we get the familiar expression that uh, the summation of delta x sub i squared plus delta y sub i squared. And now what I'm going to do is multiply each term by delta t over delta t. So I'll leave one of the delta t's out, but the one in the denominator I'll bring under the radical sign, and that will give me the expression radical of delta x sub i over delta t quantity squared plus the quantity delta y sub i over delta t squared. Take the square root of that, and then delta t remains outside. And so as delta t then goes to 0, or the number of line segments that we take goes to infinity, we get the following integral. Integral from alpha to beta 
of the radical of x prime of t squared plus y prime of t squared dt. Let's do an example with arc length. And somehow I lost an h. Find the length of the curve x equals cosine t plus t sine of t, y equals sine of t minus t sine of t, from the point 1 comma 0 to the point pi over 2 comma 1. So here's our formula. I guess the thing that I need to find are what's alpha and beta? What value of t corresponds to the point 1 comma 0? And what value of t corresponds to pi over 2 comma 1? So uh, just from uh, observation, when t equals 0, I can see that uh, x will be 1 and y is going to be 0. And when x equals pi over 2 and y equals 1, well, in order to get x equals pi over 2, I could have t equals pi over 2 to the negative pi over 2 times 1. And uh, sine of pi over 2 is 1. And then cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So my bounds go from 0 to pi over 2. When I take the derivative of x prime in the second term, I'll need to use the product rule. Um, but it works out because you can see that the first two terms in the derivative add to make 0. So I'm just left with t cosine of t. And something similar happens with the derivative of y. y prime of t is going to only have one term after collecting the like terms, just t sine of t. So that makes the integrand in our arc length integral a lot simpler because when I square both of those terms, I'll have a common factor of t squared, which I can factor out. And inside the brackets, then I have cosine squared t plus sine squared t, which is just one. So I'll have one t squared under the radical sign. So radical t squared is just t. So antiderivative of t is half t squared. And evaluating that between 0 and pi over 2, I get pi squared over 8. What about surface area? Well, our surface area uh, equations are not going to change. The only thing is, is that now for my ds, my arc length differential, I have a new expression in terms of my parametric equation. So I can use that. So let's go ahead and use that to find the formula for the surface area of a sphere. And the way we're going to do that is consider the sphere as a solid of rotation generated by rotating the region under uh, under a under the upper semicircle of radius r about the x-axis. So we're going to have a semicircle centered at the origin uh, and we're going to rotate it about the x-axis. That will generate a sphere and we're going to try to find the area of the surface of that solid. So for the semicircle, the parametric equations are x equals r cosine of t, y equals r sine of t, and zeros, t is going between 0 and pi, because it's only the upper semicircle. So our surface area formula is just the integral from a to b, y, ds. I guess my a and b now are going to be values for t, so I'm going to have ds as radical x prime of t squared plus y prime of t squared dt. And so x prime is just negative r sine of t. y prime is r cosine of t. I can factor out the r squared under the radical sign. 
and le what's left would be sine squared plus cosine squared, which is just one. So ds just turns out to be r dt. So I'm going to take the surface area is going to be 2 pi times the integral from 0 to pi y, which is just r sine t ds, which we found to be r dt. So r is just a constant here. So what I'm going to do is bring that out in front. r times r gives me 2 pi r squared. Antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. And I'll evaluate that between 0 and pi. And so uh, cosine of pi is negative 1 minus cosine of 0, which is 1. So that'll give me negative 2 times negative 2 pi r squared, which will give me the well-known formula for pi r squared.